This morning we're going to learn how to get a portion of a string or text, basically substring, and this is one of those I've found that confuses people. Whether it's PowerShell, C Sharp, SQL, you name it, it just confuses people. So I'm going to kind of, this one will be a little bit longer and I'll go pretty uh, slow on this one. Uh, first of all I need to connect to the right database and we will call a correct collection uh, string cake crazy and we have three strings in this collection here as you can see and some of them this one's a standard the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dogs this one's much longer and then we have this last one which is much shorter okay so first of all how do we call the substring so the way we're going to call a substring is we're going to use the aggregate operator and we're going to use project so we're going to first of all say db.stringcrazy.aggregate and then project here and so this is the point where I can name my column this is basically I'm sorry my, my field columns such a SQL thing this is basically where I can name my uh, uh, column or I'm sorry field for what the result of this is going to be okay so the product of the substring this is going to be the name of it and I could call it strings but I'm not going to because that would be confusing and uh, I'm gonna call this our new field name just to make it simple because I understand why some people get confused here and then I'm gonna pass in the substring operator right okay so the substring operator I'm gonna be calling the actual field name which in this case is strings and you'll notice that I'm calling it between quotes and with a dollar sign and I'm gonna start at zero and I'm gonna go to character five and I'll explain this in a second because I've seen various people talk about substring and this is where all of the confusion starts okay so what does substring do here all right so first of all we, we pass in the aggregate then project our new field name notice how it created our new field name this is the result right and then we substring the strings and we the starting point and the length that's how I look at this now the reason why I point that out is this last number here tends to confuse a lot of people so this is the starting point It's starting at the zero with character which is the beginning basically and this is going to length five and we can see that T H E space Q is five characters long right T H E space D is five characters long and M E A N W is five characters long that confuses people let's suppose we started at five and we wanted a length of two and you'll see we get uh, two characters and it starts at length five if we go up here which again I, I realize this is confusing you can see we will get uh, UI this is when I think it's OG yeah OG and then HI UI OG and then HI yeah okay so for whatever reason there are people that think or sometimes this is where the confusion starts that two is where it ends at so in other words um, I've seen this confusion a lot where someone will start at five and they think oh, okay so it's gonna end at character uh, 10 well it starts at five and it's gonna go 10 characters long it doesn't end at character 10 so when this gets called people would be confused like well, why am I getting more than five so for instance if you want to only get five characters long then you would specify the starting point and um, then the length here okay so there uh, the thing about substring I will say is with object-oriented programming you will find this is heavily used a lot um, and then the other thing about substring is that it's uh, it's very useful to know it's always hard to think of an example off the top of my head but it's very useful to know especially in ETL operations because a lot of times you will have characters in data that you're trying to remove and so you may start at a point and then end at a point and so you'll use other operators with substrings so you may substring from here to here and then you may do it from here to here so it's actually a very very useful um, a function to know in fact I, I've used substring pretty much in every single language I've ever worked in I've used substring hundreds of times 